All right, hello everybody, and welcome to session seven of Star Trek Mata Hari. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, basically we are a Star Trek Adventures actual play uh, using the rules that have been put out by Modifius Entertainment. Uh, honestly, one of the best role playing systems out there, by evidence by the fact that I run so many games of it. Or maybe I'm insane, you know, little column A, little column B. Uh, but if you're interested in catching up on my VODs or any other other ah, any of my other games, uh, all of that should be on my YouTube, which is linked below. But uh, the only other thing I have to say is I am still doing Extra Life uh, until November. So if you're not familiar with Extra Life, it's a uh, children's charity event where all donations are tax deductible and go straight to helping out local kids. So if that sort of thing interests you out of the goodness of your heart, uh, you should be able to find a link and all that information below the stream. Uh, but with that said, uh, I tell you what, let's just go ahead and have the players run through and introduce themselves, and then we'll get started. So starting with the captain. My name is Dare Wolf. I am playing Captain Frederick O'Connor. Um, glad to be here. Yep, and uh, my name is Mikhail, and I'm playing the first officer, Commander Jaro Rion. My name is Alex. I'm playing the Cardassian intelligence officer, Lieutenant Commander Peral. My name is Jeff. I'm playing the human science officer, Jeff Jensen. And I'm Brian, at Mind Over Brian on Twitter. And I'm playing uh, Lieutenant Commander General Toleop, the Rigelian chief engineer. Very nice. And with that, let's run our very much fixed, because I checked this three times, <laughs> intro. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. So this is sort of a two-parter uh, that that builds on what we did last session. God, I can English today. Um, but to start things off, uh, we have an interesting log from a mirror version of Lieutenant or Commander Jaro. So Evil Jaro, uh, go ahead and uh, re let's see what you got. Sure thing. First officer's log, supplemental. Well, that marks three weeks since we've been trapped on this goddamn planet. I'm beginning to toy with the idea that we all actually died when we crashed here and that this is our hell, having to deal with each other for all of eternity. If I have to hear the captain's irritating laugh one more time, I swear I'm gonna silence him with my fist. Morale is picked up now that we know that our other selves are on the way. Preparing the trap has actually been kind of fun. Planning a clean kill is always a good mental challenge. But Lieutenant Commander Prowl has been extremely unhelpful. You know, that guy really gives me the creeps. I mean, I like Cardassians, but this guy, this guy is a weirdo. When I raised these suspicions to the captain, he, of course, just laughed maniacally and sent me on my way. But whatever, I, I don't have time to worry about this. Our only chance of survival is taking that ship and getting it and this Genesis device back to our universe. Anything else is a distraction. But I find myself curious thinking about my other half. The fact that he should be coming here of all people, it almost makes you wonder if those religious idiots back home have a point about this 
elite stuff. Our records show that this other universe is populated by versions of ourselves that are weak and sentimental. I cringe at the thought of a meek, subservient Jarrion. I might have a lot of faults, but weakness is not one of them. I learned that lesson early back in that orphanage. Only the strong survive. And survival has always been my goal more than anything else. All around me, I see people scheming and plotting against each other for power. Idiots got in an endless cycle of destruction in order to grasp the fleeting moment of authority before it's snatched away from them by the next guy. I'm not like that. I've always kept my eye on the prize and nothing distracts me from looking out for my own skin. I'm going to survive this, not because some stinking prophets said I would, but because I willed it to be. Very nice. And uh, as promised, you may start the session with two momentum. So uh, to uh, let's do a refresher. God, I really am out of it today. I apologize. Uh, to sort of start the session, we are going to resume right where we left off at the end of last session. So as a refresher, the Matahari has not crash landed, but shall we say emergency landed on a Venus-like planet. Uh, and in the process of landing, they discovered that there was already a crash ship here. So uh, an away team was assembled and sent to go investigate this crash ship for both potential people to rescue and for supplies to repair the Mata Hari. However, when the away team, I would say, breached inside the uh, wrecked ship, what they found were the mirror-verse versions of themselves lying in wait. So that's exactly where we're going to pick up. Uh, if I remember correctly, Jaro, or Evil Jaro, I should say, you had just tossed away your phaser and you were approaching the away team uh, with your hands up. So let's start there. Boys, boys, boys. I believe there's been a, a huge misunderstanding. Um, I'm going to let... Uh, Prowl, could you speak for the away team? Because otherwise it's going to be me talking, talking to myself. Phaser fire doesn't exactly seem like a misunderstanding. Well, well, look, look. My Bradish is as stupid as your Bradish. As soon as he saw your Bradish running in here, he he fired uh, against against my my orders. He just he just got trigger happy. I don't blame you for for blowing the the two of them up. But it was never my intention to, 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 to do this violently. So where did the other shots come from? Things got out of hand. The, the other you who, by the way, is, is a lot less reasonable than you are, uh, took a few pot shots before running off frankly i think he's the one we need to be worried about bradish how are you doing back there yeah and he's uh, fine boss just a little little hurt I, I, he moves over and picks up the type three phaser he goes i told you we should have brought these <laughs> all right so what do we do from here? Commander? <laughs> <laughs> well, look. I don't have any beef with you people. All I want is to, to go home. And, and if you're anything like my, my problem, I'm sure you've, you've already figured out what's going on here. Uh, all I want is to go home. The other you, the other O'Connor, I think that they're probably a little bit more concerned with tying up loose ends, if you know what I mean. I think I understand what you mean, unfortunately. So I think we should probably let the captain know what's going on and what we just walked into here. 
All right. All right. So what that's going to be is that's going to involve a control and an engineering. And normally you would just get right through, like there wouldn't be a test involved. But do recall there are some dampening effects of both the planet and the vessel you're in. Um, so I think it's fair for me to say that the difficulty is a three here. Uh, let's see. I will try. Remember, you do have two momentum if you want to use that. I think I'm going to use one point of momentum to get a third die. Okay. I don't think I have any focuses that will help here. Yeah, I'm not really seeing any that would help, unfortunately. Oh, interesting. Okay. I will offer you a compromise. This may succeed at cost. However, there will be a complication involved. I think it's worth it. Yeah. Okay. So, like the message sending in D&D, &D, you have 25 words to say to the captain. Oh my gosh. So if mm. someone would volunteer, because I can't show my hands on stream, if someone could count off the words that Prawl says. Captain, we have been ambushed by the Mirror Universe counterparts. That's 10. 15 more. What would you like us to do? That was good. Yeah, there you go. Captain, you may reply with 10 words. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. That's not one of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, that one. might be a good one, honestly, in character. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Trust nothing they say. Get supplies. Question, out of character. Yes. Would he know that he only has 10 words to reply? No. Uh, Trust nothing they say. Get the supplies and get... And then the message cuts off. And the that wasn't the complication, though. The complication is that running up the corridor wielding two Type 3 phasers is none other than the evil version of Lieutenant Commander Tolayup. So uh, give, us, give us a taste of uh, <laughs> evil Tolayup, if you'd be so kind. Mood, see the, see the tattle, Mac. Commander Jero, are you okay? Here. <laughs> and I toss it. <laughs> Toss him in. You, you moods, it's fools. Everybody put your weapons on the ground. I love it. Everybody, I think we could converse a little better if we were, uh, if, 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 if we all put our weapons down. Man, Commander Jaro, you were right. Uh, your your mirror universe version is uh, quite uh, uh, what did you say uh, uh, pussy? Ah. <laughs> yeah, he appears to be he appears to be hiding in the in the shuttle. Uh, say five more words, and I shoot your shuttle so that the airlock breaks. That's right. Now toss your weapons out, or I vaporize your outer airlock, and you will never return to your stupid ship. And then he makes a show of, of uh, increasing the power on his type threes. Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> nice. All right. Bradish is super rash. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry about this, everybody in advance, but he opens fire on Tolayup. <laughs> okay. All right. He's going to try to vaporize him. He's like, go for oh, it. Nice. 
Okay, well, let's be clear here. So if you are aiming to vaporize, that means I do get threat, just so you know. That's, I mean, maybe not vaporize, but he's going to shoot him. Like, okay. He's trying to, he's kind of trying to incapacitate. Okay, uh, that's why I asked. Because it's, it's very important because anytime anyone is shooting to disintegrate, the opposite team basically gets a momentum or a threat. That's fair. Um, so in terms of firing here, Bradish, uh, we need to actually settle on two things. First thing, to lay up, what is your daring? <laughs> it's eight. An eight. Nine. <laughs> it's nine. Sorry. Nine. What does Bradish have for his daring? Nine. Okay. We'll go to the next deciding factor. Uh, what is your fitness to lay up? Oh, 11. What is Bradish's, uh, fitness 10 okay so to lay up you see the regular mirror regular universe version of bradish going for his phaser well, well now i am the one who feels bad because i'm definitely gonna vaporize it <laughs> okay so actually i did a quick look on this on the side here i have to spend threat so i will spend one threat in your stead to make it so this attack would be lethal um so you're rolling a control and a security and the difficulty is a two. Is there anything Bradish can do to go first? Um, I'm trying to think here. Does he have a value there... yet? Um, he. I didn't put any in. I don't know. So apparently not. I mean, well, he's just he's just a secondary character. Let's say this then. Um, there is an activation. Basically, if he six he survives this incoming phaser shot, he will count as being activated, and you can give him things like a talent. A value, more focuses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Probably gonna die. <laughs> so, uh, to lay up is exosex, which means uh, whenever attempting a task using fitness or daring, he gets to roll an additional d20 and gain <laughs> and gain momentum. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm sure that's fine. Brad, it's just gonna die. <laughs> that happens. I I I'm I'm sure it's fine. I forgot that I built a combat engineer. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I have any focuses, if that helps. No, I don't see any focuses, unfortunately. Hey. Okay, okay. So what happens is he misses. And I think the complication is that maybe he put too much power into the phaser rifle. So to let yeah. evil to lay up, your phaser rifle is now overloading. Yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> but yeah, Bradish. You now have a shot. Radish doesn't even say anything. He sees the other guy charge up his face, and he's like, Mama was right. All right. I gotta get back in the accent. You dirty French bastard. Um, <laughs> all right. And um, let's see here. Let's, uh, what am I rolling? Sorry. Control it's security difficulty of two. Control <laughs> security. Oh, hold on. Control security. Ooh. I think I forgot the control. Wow, I suck at this. I'm so trying real hard here. Security. Well, you do have a momentum if you want to roll like, three. Can I spend a momentum, please, everybody? Please, please. Is it okay? Yep. Yes, please. I love you. Jaro, if you wouldn't mind. Yep. All right. That's okay, you get the two successes you need. And because you're using a type three, you're rolling nine challenge die. Gosh darn tootin'. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I've been training for. <laughs> Boom, seven. Okay. Uh, would you like to reroll the die or you want to pick with seven? Uh, what do I? What would I reroll? Uh, the zeros, zeros, but you would have to give me the threat. Uh, I'll, I'll reroll the zeros. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so okay. one, two, three, four. Four zeros? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's do it. And reroll those four. Oh, All cool. right. So how much stress does to evil to lay up have? Um, that looks like 14. All right. Well, uh, you are going to take a grand total of 11 stress damage, which uh, doesn't get rid of all of your stress, but it does injure you. Uh, so what I'm going to say is, Bradish, you bring up your phaser rifle, take a careful aim shot, uh, pull the trigger, and a lance of orange light comes out of the gun and impacts to lay up center mass. And to lay up, you fall over completely stunned onto the floor. 
Radish trains his gun on Evil Jaro and is like, hey, you, Evil Jaro, drop your phaser. You're next, sucker. <laughs> like, look, here's the thing. I've just met you. I'm surrounded by crazy people as, as, as you see. I don't know if you're any less crazy. I, and as he's sort of like trying to, trying to mumble this through, um, uh, uh, Commander Jaro, the good Jaro, for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. just shouts from the shuttle, uh, the, ordering everybody to, to um, just like capture him and bring him in. Okay. Radish is going to be like, drop the weapon. All right. At that point, Evil Jaro will, will just be like, well, fuck, I've already thrown one. And he tosses the other one. Tosses that. We just start a pile in the corner. Yeah, he Danny, just starts a pile in the corner. Danny grabs the other one, is now dual wielding. <laughs> and just like, is he, is, he, is he up there? He Clearly, he wants to meet me. So the, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll facilitate. And he just heads on. He heads on up. Okay. So, uh, if I understand correctly, you guys want to get back into the shuttle. Now, do you want to leave completely, go back to the Matahari, or do you just want to go back into the shuttle and seal the door kind of a thing? I don't think we want I to think, leave yet because no, we have back accomplished in the our mission. No, back the door. Yeah, but okay. not leave yet. All right. And I think I've got a runabout interior. I do. Look at me being prepared. <laughs> uh, so my next question is, what are you doing about the stun forms of Evil Bradish, Evil Jensen, and Evil Tolaip? Also, also bringing them. Also bringing them. Okay. So, what kind of shuttle did we bring over? I think we established it was a uh, one of the ru- the runabouts. Okay. So you could conceivably put the evil people into a brig like area. I that's think that's I our best think. idea. Yeah. yeah. Say, is there idea. any way to contain them? Yeah. All right. So there's half the tokens. Let me go back and grab the other ones. But you guys can go ahead. <laughs> And get started with your interrogations, if you'd so like. Um, Evil Jaro, as he walks by, good Jaro is just, or or our Jaro is just like, that's uh, one dorky earring you got there. And he like points to the um, Bajoran religious uh, earring that that Jaro is wearing. Jaro is trying to recuse himself as much as possible because this is this is like pushing at the edges of his professionalism and he kind of walks over to the team and he's just like you guys did a good job out there bro i'm trusting you to handle the interrogation of the other me we need to know what they know that can help us get out of here and i hope that he'd be willing to make a deal if it means that he gets out of this alive too. I'll see what I can do for you, Commander. All right. Thank so you. as that's uh, setting up, we're actually going to cut very briefly back to the Matahari's main engineering, where um some of these people are not here, but Taleb is. Taleb, as promised, everything's gone to shit. The uh, nacelles have lost their drive plasma. Uh, there's hull breaches that you have to deal with. It's uh, it's not a very good situation you find you or your ship in. Uh, all right, Lieutenant McTavish. I need you to uh, report on uh, the status of the hull breaches in the ventral section. Do you want the good news or the bad news? I want both newses. Um, okay, I guess I'll start with the bad news. Bad news, uh, we're definitely going to have to put in at Stardock at some point. That seems to be the case after every mission. Now give me good news. Uh, good news is uh, I actually just got a date with Acute Ensign, so small <laughs> positives. 
McTavish, I'm very happy for you. <laughs> uh, bring your team back to main engineering. We will prioritize and do some triage on hull breaches. Yes, sir. Uh, should we leave the emergency bulkheads in place? Indeed. And now, uh, Lieutenant Malkovich, report on the dorsal hull breaches. Well, if I were to be honest, uh, I have no idea what accent this is, but this is what we are going with. Uh, the good news is that uh, she'll fly again, sir. Is there bad news to accompany that good news? Yes, the bad news is that I think a, uh, how you say, a swine in our engineering team has gotten a date with my sister. Oh. Well, you have my utmost sympathies. Uh, bring your team back to engineering and we will prioritize which repairs need to be made first. As you Chief wish. engineer, out. I, I have no idea what that accent was. I apologize. I loved it. <laughs> well. Computer personal note. Emphasize professionalism among engineering team in future. End note. To lay up to Captain. Captain O'Connor here. It seems the damage to both the dorsal and ventral sections are uh, severe, but not too much to keep us from flying. The warp engines are regenerating their warp plasma. Uh, the dilithium crystals are cracked, but uh, we will probably be able to generate power within a few hours at most. Uh, would you like a full report? Give me the, uh, just give me the basics. How long will it take us to get us back in the air? Well, we'll have to see uh, whether the landing struts have survived the landing, which, by the way, uh, I hear good job is in order. But next time, maybe warn me your web event plasma. Uh, we did not close the caps, and that's why the warp engine is pretty much empty. All right. Um, yep, I would say three hours until main power. Uh, maybe a couple more before we are able to generate enough thrust to lift. Uh, what is the situation with the planet? Uh, as of right now, I just heard from the away team that uh, they've run into the mirror universe versions of ourselves. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. But um, I believe my message may have been cut off. Um, in the meantime, don't worry about them. Um, I'm handling some triage up here with injuries along with our chief medical officer. Um, do you require any more manpower uh, for your repairs? I do have a few extra hands that I can send your way if necessary. We'll take as many extra hands as you have. Any hand can wield a plasma uh, torch. Rodriguez, Johnson, Fred, Donna Main Engineering, C. Tolayup. Do what he needs. All right. All right. I've got a couple of men coming down to assist you. Um, do you need anything else at this time? No, I think we'll, we just need time. Very good. Carry on to layup. Thank you for the update. O'Connor out. All right. Excellent. And with that, we will shift back to the away team where uh, I have a question that might be very relevant here. So, Jaro, I'm assuming you're staying up in the cockpit of the runabout, or at least away from the whole interrogation thing. Uh, Jensen and Bradish, where are you located in the runabout exactly? Hmm. Um, I would probably be up front, too, with the sensors and things running any kind of scans I can. I have, interrogation is not my something that I would partake in. Okay. Oh, Radish small... would have gone to whatever, sorry. No, I was going to say, small note, uh, everybody's stress does recover, so you are back to full stress. Woo. Yeah. Bradish would have gone to his, um, like, like just the medical center. If we have, not medical center, but like grabbed a medical, like tricorder or something, just like scanned himself, like done a couple like triage, patched himself up a little bit, and then he would be in the corner of this room looking menacing with a type three phaser. <laughs> okay. While he interrogates. Yeah. Well um, oh go ahead. What sorry, I was gonna say what Commander Jaro I think would like to do with, with Jensen is maybe try and identify where the Genesis device is housed on this on this okay. vessel. If it's if possible, if we could narrow that down, we could um, we could seize it or try and deactivate it. 
Also, would we have a, a list of parts that we need to, to <laughs> that we could try and scan for as well? Uh, we're, you we're would, still, yes. So we, we, we do need to look for those as well so that we can make sure that we can actually get off the planet. And what I would say, as I try to modify Taleb's token, Roll20 is doing that thing where it gives him the blinking bar, which is weird. Uh, but yeah. uh, let's go ahead and have you do that sensor roll. So, right. Jensen, you're going to be doing a reason and either science or engineering. And Jaro can assist you with the same. The ship will assist you with a sensors and a security. Uh, but since we don't have a runabout sheet for some reason, I'll make a note to add one later. Uh, if someone could just roll me a d20 and you want uh, a 9 or lower. I'm going to do reason science. Because it gives or, me my, be my best opportunity. Okay. Um, and I have sensor operations. So I will could, I, could I do something security to help? Um, I would give you reason security if you were to focus on maybe say the Genesis device. Sure. Okay, I got two successes and the ship got us a four. Yep, so we're up to three. All right, so the difficulty was a, a two, so you do get two momentum from your success. And cool. uh, what you find you. is... You got it? Uh, let's see, what you find is that it's actually not that difficult uh, to get the parts you need. Uh, there's two ways to go about it. Um, you have the internal schematics of the ship. And what you're realizing as you're looking at these schematics is... Yeah, I mean, this is almost a mirror copy of the Matahari. So if you go to, say, Junction Alpha 2, uh, maybe go through Jeffries 2, Beta 7, uh, you could get to the parts you need. Um, so that's option one, doing it manually. Option two is you try to transport it out. Now, what I would say is that transporting it out, while it would be, quote-unquote, easier... It would be a hard extended task, but it is something you could attempt. I, uh, it might de depend on what uh, Lieutenant Commander Prawl is able to uh, get from our guest as to what other surprises may be hiding for us among the ship. And we'll actually go back to uh, the rear of the runabout, where the prisoners, Prawl and Bradish, are located. Uh, at this point, uh, all of the evil characters, all the Mirrorverse characters, have woken up. And they are either prowling around, sitting and staring menacingly, or whatever evil versions of yourself would be doing in this situation. Did Bradish put us in... in in binds i'm allowed to i would have i would have put him in like some sort of like shackles or something um i'd allow it uh i would say that all of them we'll just say that that's sort of the um like the, the blocky bind. sort of one that keeps the two hands in front of you correct so uh, i have... disable it with my nose <laughs> doop, 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 doop. <laughs> 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 your stupid shackles don't keep me uh. i mean if you really <laughs> want to do it i'll spend two threat <laughs> Radish phasers him again. <laughs> Behind the force field, you idiot! <laughs> That's fair. I, I would want to pull uh, Mirror Jaro away from the rest of them before an interrogation. Okay. So does yeah, Evil Jaro resist, or...? No! What do you... Yeah, well, I'll, go, I'll go along. Okay. Is he coming in the cell, or is he just... It's Gerald just walking out. Let's have Bradish has the two Type Three phaser rifles, right? Mm -hmm. Have him basically Overwatch on the cell to lower the force field just long enough to get Jaro out. Okay. So the force field goes down. Evil Jaro steps out. 
Last opportunity for any of the evil characters to do something. Radish, your stupid face looks even stupider <laughs> behind the rifle. <laughs> Good one, Delay. Is that what your mother told me last night? You stupid French bastard. <laughs> oh, Bradish, you always reveal how stupid you are. I don't have a mother. Rigelians have three sexes, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, and I've and I've been with all of them. Ah. I wasn't aware that your uh, cavities could take such a girth. Uh, he's got the typical in- intelligence of a New Yorker. It's okay. Uh, so yeah. Evil Jaro steps out. <laughs> and I cry a little Amazing. bit from happiness. Uh, yeah, so Prawl, where are you doing the interrogation? Are you going to take him into the uh, the medical slash armory room? Or are you more or less just going to do it in presence of Bradish? Uh, pretty much out into the hallway. Okay. Not not going to bring him into the armory. Okay. That just sounds like a bad idea. No, All right, know. so what's a guy got to do to get a Ractagino around here? Cooperate and you can get one. Come on, this is, you know, don't you want to establish a rapport right away? Put it to you this way, without each other, no one's getting off of this planet. Now, that I can't agree with. Um, so, what, what, what you're thinking? Your ship's damaged. Our ship is damaged. I'm fairly sure one of us is getting off this planet. Oh well, I don't know why it has to be so 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 stark here. Now look, I'm gonna level with you because you seem a lot cooler than my pro. I just want to get out of this shit alive. So, so, so you tell me what you need, and I'm willing to deal. Look, this is a pretty nice runabout. I'm good. I wanted to take your ship, but you know, if you give me this shuttle, and I can take, um, and I can take delay up uh, my Bradish. Um, you you can do whatever the fuck you want with him, frankly. But if I can take Goliath up and the two of us can 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 get out of here, um, I'm willing I'm willing to work with you. Well, obviously I can't just give you a runabout, but I'm sure with the captain's authorization we could figure something out if you're able to help us get the parts that we need. I mean, what? What parts do you need? I mean, frankly, that uh, the 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 um, the right giant would be a little bit more helpful, parts wise. So, well, that's it. Just gonna kind of look back towards the holding area, Jermac. Somehow, I doubt that. <laughs> he's he's actually uh, he's pretty funny when you get to know him. What I'm thinking is you help us out on the inside if we work to get the parts that we need maybe you're able to make sure we're not interrupted. Hmm. Well and you're telling me that you'll do everything in your power to get your captain to, to hand this this baby over and tap Not... on the side of the, uh, uh, right about with my shackled hands. Not necessarily this one in particular, <laughs> but we might be able to work something out. All right. I just, uh, I got one more question for you. Okay. What's what's he like, the the other me? Do do, do do you know a lot about him? I've worked with him for a while now. We didn't start off too well. 
but I think we have a good working rapport now. No. Sounds boring. But, uh, <laughs> I just, you know, just, just friend to friend here. You might want to look into uh, his past a little bit. A ask him about the orphanage, maybe. Uh, ask him about Jelana. And then I, sh I shot that word really loud. Uh, Everybody hears it. Yes. And the uh, good Jaro just turns around and starts shouting back uh, to, to shut his damn mouth. Uh, and it's starting to escalate. It's starting to escalate. They're like just shouting at each other. All right, so that's a good question. Jensen, Prawl, Bradish, do you intervene? Okay, uh, everything all right there, Commander? This, he's trying to sow dissent among the crew. It's, it's, it's absolutely... Oh. And I... Um, there's a stern to Prawl. Did you get anything useful out of him? I'm working on it. Then... Uh Radish? Yes, uh, yeah, 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 Commander, I'm here. Did you have something to say? Well, I, I was just going to say, Commander, and, and I'm not trying to step out of bounds here or nothing, but didn't the captain say to trust nothing they say? And then Bradish backs away. And as you back away, I'm going to answer that question in chat. So to lay up, there is a panel on the interior of this uh, quote-unquote improvised cell. Because, you know, it's a runabout. It's not meant to be a brig. So, yeah, if you want to do what I think you want to do, I would say this would be a daring plus engineering uh, difficulty of three. And I will be nice. I will give you one of my threats so that you may roll three dice. Excellent. <clears throat> well, computers or fusion reactors um, focus apply. I'll give you both. All right, you get the three successes. So let's oh, make sure yeah. we're actually on the same page here. You are killing the force field and doing something to the runabout? Well, I'm, actually, what I was thinking was I'm going to kill the force field once Bradish finishes talking. I'm just going to clock him one. Okay. Uh, I tell you what, uh, if I... Cause I'm trying to think how much threat I've got here. Uh, right after going, hey, Bradish! <laughs> <laughs> God, I've wanted to do that so much. Uh, now, I no offense, ask, other Bradish. I don't necessarily think Bradish would have taken his eyes off of them. He just would have responded back. I, I'm not trying to mince words here. No, no, no. I, I, it's, it's perfectly fair. I'm just trying to figure out order of operations here. Uh, let's do it this way. So, to lay up, you kill the force field, and you cause everyone's shackles to fall off. I think that's fair for the success on the task. Hooray. Mm. Then we have the potentially incoming melee combat. So we'll go through the whole score again. Bradish, I think, to lay up has you beat, but you do have two momentum you could spend to go first. Do I have to spend both? You do have to spend both, yes. I will defer to the group as I am just a lowly lieutenant junior grade. Should I spend it? I, I don't need it for anything right now, so it's all yours, man. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and use it. Going to spend it then. All right. To phaser him again. Again. All right. So, yeah, you know what to uh, do. Control security. Control, con two. control security. I mean, the best part of this is that there are three of us. Yeah, I was going to say. say. So. All right. Um, uh, That's unfortunate. <sighs> he's going for Talaya because he doesn't like him. Mm hmm. Um, Search. Three yes, successes. You get a momentum. Talk. Very nice. And yeah, <clears throat> nine challenge die, please. All right. Oh dear. Come on, baby. And oh my yeah, gosh. That's enough that evil to lay up. You uh you try to run forward, but he hits you mid state or mid sentence, or you know what I mean? He hits you mid motion and you go stunned to the floor. Uh, however, uh, as we move into actual initiative order here, uh, let me just clear everything out. And Reddish is going to scream, everyone. they broke free. Don't trust them. The captain warned you. 
<laughs> you can't shout something and take your turn. Cheating. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it a free action? I don't know. It is a free action. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, why are you working against us? Why are you hate us? Because I'm evil to lay up, guys. I know. <laughs> He's like, I only got one character in the sea. Uh, all right. So, uh, it is now technically Mirror of Universe turn. So, Evil Jaro, Evil Bradish, or Evil Jensen, uh, which among you would like to go? Oh, Evil Bradish is going to tackle. Uh, I was going to say, Bradish. I'm going to follow Evil Bradish because I assume he's already oh, yeah. jumped over the table. <laughs> oh, he's like he's like making a beeline. Like, yeah. yeah. Evil Jaro will wait to see how it plays out. So, okay. <laughs> boom! Evil Bradish charges and is going to try to deck normal Bradish. All right, so roll? this is interesting. You're literally rolling against yourself. Uh, I need <laughs> Evil Bradish. <laughs> We'll yeah. do. We'll say the first roll is evil Bradish. The second roll is regular Bradish. Okay. So they're both the same roll. They're both daring and security difficulty of one. Daring. So security. Two d twenty. Uh, I do have security as a focus, so I'm assuming that. Yeah, that would apply. Cool. Oh, okay, so good. mirror universe gets three successes. Oh boy. Can I can I can I spend a momentum to roll three dice, everybody? For regular Bradish? Good Bradish? Are you cool with that? Yeah. We're do gonna what do you it. Wanna do. All right, we're gonna spend that. Okay, so unfortunately, not enough. So evil Bradish, I need you to roll me six challenge die, please, as you clock regular Bradish across the face. Oh dear. Damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happens is Evil Bradish, you vault over the table and you clock regular Bradish. And regular Bradish just goes limp, like one of those uh like UFC fights where the guy gets hit and maybe stumbles for a bit and then goes cold to the ground. It's one of those hits. So, mm, so good. This Bradish mm. is now out of combat. Uh, Evil Bradish is going to pick up that Type 3 phaser and go to town. Well, there's right. two of them. There are two of them, and you only have one minor, so you can only pick up one. Picks up the one. Right. Yeah, it'll teach my other self to talk back to Toleup. All right. Well, now it is either Prawl, uh, regular Jaro, or regular Jensen. So, Evil... So, so, so Jaro is quick to action. Mm -hmm. So... Evil Jaro is going to take his turn immediately. Okay. Um, um, and he's going to uh, take a few steps back, and he's going to actually take the um, he's going to take the direct action mm -hmm. to um, order uh, evil evil Bradish to take a shot at, at Prawl. Okay. So yeah, Evil Bradish, you now are able to use control security difficulty of three. I don't, you have I don't know why I'm playing for them so like aggressively. No, I love it. It's this perfect. is how they would play. <laughs> this is um, perfect. Could Evil Bradish have a threat, please, to roll three dice? I'll give you three threats. So you're rolling four die. God bless you. <laughs> Glorious. And it's it's assisted by me. Yes, uh, you're assisting with a presence oh. and a security, and you're just basically getting me threat, which is nice. Because, yeah, that's two successes there, so whatever you roll is a uh, threat for me. Oh, look at that. I got two threat back. Very nice. So, yeah, God, Evil yeah. Bradish. Uh, nine challenge die to hit Prawl, please. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, so Prawl, uh, six is enough to injure you. Uh, oh, no. Now, again, it is a new session, so your determination has come back. Would you like to stay up? It's probably a good idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Prawl, you're going to take six stress of damage, and just be aware Ouch. that if you take two more injuries, meaning five or more damage and your stress is gone, Prawl is dead, just so you know. But now that we've done the back-to-back -back, uh, enemy turns, it is now regular Prawl, uh, regular Jensen, and regular Jaro. I think I'm going to go since I'm the one right here in most danger. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. 
I am firing at Evil Bradish. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be a uh, control security, please. And Difficulty I do. Two. I do have the talent Dead Eye Marksman. Okay, which I believe I'm trying to remember. That's the one. If you aim, you get additional die. Or if I aim, the difficulty goes down by one, including the normal benefits of aim. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. So your difficulty will go down to just a one. See, we do not have any momentum currently. Correct. Unfortunately, not. You can gain some here. So two dice. And I have handheld phasers, which is what I'm using as a focus. Mm -hmm. And you get the one success. You can reroll that zero to see if you get more momentum. I will go ahead and reroll it. Okay. Hey, look at that. You get two momentum. And yeah, for you, you're rolling eight challenge die. And that is enough to put evil Bradish down. So in comical fashion, or maybe yeah. not comical, but Bradish, you hit Prawl. Prawl looks down at where you shot him, the scorch mark on his uniform. And without really even thinking, he just puts the phaser in your direction, squeezes off a shot, and evil Bradish is down. All right. So does regular Jaro want to use his quick to action? Um, at this point, Evil Jaro, who is in handcuffs, mm -hmm. is not. Is They're not, not in handcuffs. Not yeah, handcuffs. Yeah, no, I the... released them. Okay. Oh, you released all our handcuffs. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, then, definitely. Yeah, we'll we'll use the quick to action. Okay. Um. And um, uh, I'll. Because Prowl is, is such a sharpshooter, I'll direct Prowl to take a, um, basically to take down Evil Jaro. Okay. Going to be doing the same thing to <laughs> Evil Jaro. <laughs> All right. Momentum. Spend some momentum. Just get the extra die. Yeah. So I am taking my shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll be assisted by me. Mm-hmm. And uh, you'll do a presence security for uh, regular Jaro. All right. Two successes from uh, Jaro there. Very nice. And then and three. Th three. So five, which means four momentum. Very nice. Yes. Very yeah. nice. You can reroll the zero, too, if you want, because I have the Pfizer trait. He also has Dead Eye Marksman. He can reroll it like twice, kind of a thing. Oh, okay. That's crazy. <laughs> Jeez. Well, let's do see. it. Do it. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? A complication? <laughs> nah, that couldn't happen. Don't you put that evil on us, CLH. Oh, Don't you put, put that, that evil in the on universe. Us. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I have to be somewhat of a jerk. But yeah. All right. So uh, one success, you're capped on momentum. So yeah. Uh, same challenge die roll. Also, hi, Irie. How you doing? And yeah, you have enough that now Evil Jaro goes down for the count. So it is at this point, Evil Jensen, <laughs> all of your friends have been put down. Uh, Bradish, the one that was shouting. Oh, I'm sorry, friends. Mr. Rathgar, you get a shout. Thank you, Mr. Rathgar, you get a shout out. There you go. Um, but yeah, Evil Jensen. Friends. Yeah, friends, I'm still sitting. Point. I'm still sitting at the table. Just gonna shout out loud, idiots, all of them. Okay. Every In that one. case, I would normally end combat here, but and tell me if you would have done something different, really, Prawl. I think Evil Prawl, when he disappeared, he snuck aboard the runabout. Yes, he did. All right. So literally from the ceiling uh, <laughs> above the cockpit uh, drops the evil Lieutenant Commander Prawl. So Ooh. evil Prawl, who are you attacking? Jaro. Shocking. 
much. (laughs) 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 Oh, this is good. Oh, this is everything. Yes, Irie, they're Tolarian hook spiders all over again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord. All right, so Evil Prawl, Daring Security, Difficulty 1. Jaro, you do have a chance to uh, fight back, so you're doing your own Daring Security. Actually, I would like to charge the phaser. Oh. Of course you would. (laughs) Oh, so wait, you're actually firing down. You're not, like, meleeing him. You're using your phaser from the ceiling. I am using the phaser from the ceiling. Okay, in that case, uh, Jaro, you do not get to resist, but Prawl, the difficulty for you is a one. Oh, dear. Can I roll three dice? I will give you a threat. You may have a threat, because I find it funny. Mm Mm-hmm. And I focus. You do it. Yeah, you have literally the same rolls you would normally. Hey, look at that. I get three threat. Very nice. (laughs) All right. You know the drill. Uh, That's going to be eight challenge die for you. And if I get an effect, I am using the wide setting on the phaser. Oh, to hit Jensen. Ah! Evil Prawl has a type three. God, no. Point of order. Point of order. Evil Prawl has a type three, so we should actually roll nine dice, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, should be rolling nine. Let me roll one more then. Oh, dear. All right. Well, Jaro. I advocate for evil, but. So, Jaro and Jensen, uh, with eight damage, uh, (laughs) you guys are going to go down unconscious unless you spend two momentum each to stay up. Now, just a reminder, because Jensen, I think that puts you literally to one stress. Yes, it does. You would be in the same situation as Prawl. Where if you took two more injuries, which is very likely, you would be done. So. I think we will. We should do that. Yeah, go ahead yeah. and spend them. I'm can they gonna... spend a determination to stay up? They can, but I would recommend keeping the determination. That's yeah, fair. That's I might fair. need that determination later. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's fair. But that's gonna put me. Uh, put me in that, that, that wonderful. Yep, and Jaro, you would take a total of eight, so I think you'd be at uh, six. But yeah, that is uh, Evil Prawl's turn, and by my count, the only one that hasn't acted is regular Jensen. Yeah! Oh, this is going to be fun. Spend uh, your determination to get a crit one to shoot him back. <laughs> yeah, do whatever it. I have to do to, yeah, to hit him yeah. back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Uh, combat's not my thing. That's All what right. I count on. That's what I count Prawl for. But he's not around. So. All right. Uh, so what am I rolling? Control security, difficulty of two. Oh, this is going to... Yeah, I'm going to need whatever I can to get some uh, security. So yeah, I don't have any focuses, so I'd like to spend a momentum to get a third die. If that's okay, guys. Just sure. spend your determination to have one dice roll a one. Well, if it does, it would be two momentum. For a mm-hmm. third die. Yeah. He should, I think you should spend the determination to have an auto. Okay. Because that's yeah. an auto hit then, and then mm-hmm. you just roll one one die. Or two die. As yeah, he, he still rolls the two like normal. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I'll do that then, just to make it easier on myself, because who knows, I... Need all the help when combat. Hey, yeah, I got So, one. hey, you get a momentum. All right. Woo-hoo. So, oh my God, you'll have a security of one. I know. Oh. That's why I said I need all the help I can get. So, I need you to roll me. You're using a type two, four yeah. challenge die, please. All right. Here goes nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That is uh, <laughs> two damage. Would you like to spend a momentum to reroll those zeros? Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> okay. And that one that I just got. Uh, so it's uh, two. And... Okay. So we have a few options here. Um, option one, you spend your remaining two momentum to do five damage and stun Prawl. Or you let that stand and evil Prawl is still up. Uh, I think it's worth it, but uh, I will defer to the team. I think it's worth it. Yeah. 
All right. We'll spend the last two momentum to stun evil Prawl. Okay. So uh, <laughs> as he falls from the ceiling, you stun him almost midair. It's one of those things where he's firing with his phaser, and then you sort of quickly sort of draw your phaser and hit him midair. And when he hits the ground, there's just a poof, and he bounces a little bit. But, important question, since it would technically go back to the enemy's turn, would Evil Jensen still just be chilling in the back? Uh, I would have started moving towards uh, the one control panel because everything's happening on the front half of the ship. So I figure I have at least a few seconds to try and do something and maybe lock them out of the back half. Yeah, sure. So let's uh, keep initiative order then. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're trying to accomplish. Is it just locking down the back half, or well, lock it, locking down the back half? And is uh, I would well, I could try and channel my inner to lay up and try and do something to maybe gas them up front. Ooh, I like it. Anestazine gas. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me a daring and a security. Oh gosh, difficulty of three. And I'm not going to lie, this could very well be a pivotal moment of this campaign, because if he succeeds, we might actually have to do a Mirror Universe campaign, which I'm not going to say is not on the table, but we might have to do Mirror Universe. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So, uh, I have... So, first of all, Daring Security, you know it's not my strong suit, so... Mm -hmm. And I have Threat. (laughs) Uh, Well, you would have to give me Threat. Oh, wait, no, you're Evil Jensen. I'm Evil Jensen. <laughs> you you give me threat. Oh, so this is one of those situations where I have to really think, do I want you guys to go that direction or not? <laughs> Fuck it. It's interesting. You may have three threats, so you may roll four dice. Yes. Okay. And I have Xenobiology. Would that apply here? I'll give it to you because of oh, Prawl fucker. in play here. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. Now, now, what I would say, because I do want to be fair, you do have determination as Evil Jensen if you want to reroll. I do. I really do. No! Don't! <laughs> no! Come it's, on. I, it's Evil Jensen. Of course he's going to do it. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> evil Taleb would never have gone down if he had determination to spend. Oh, sorry. That's my that's my bad for not reminding you. Then that's my uh, bad. <laughs> nice. hey. oh, All right. Oh, no, this yes. is, this is very interesting. We're gonna we're gonna play with this. So up front, uh, a force field sort of seals Evil Jensen safely behind. Well, a force field as every other part of the runabout is filled with anesthesine gas. And everyone is locked out of their con locked out. You all go unconscious. Everybody's out. <laughs> um, which I guess now turns the focus to Evil Jensen. So Evil Jensen, you have the runabout to yourselves. What are you going to do? Ooh. So uh is there any way I can contact evil Captain O'Connor? Oh yes, you can tap your com edge and get him easy. All right. Captain Jensen here. <laughs> oh yes sorry i was practicing my evil laugh what is it jetson we have the runabout and our mirror selves except for you of course and uh good to lay up i must say uh i even have our prawl who abandoned us in the initial fight and came back in his usual way, rash and without a plan, and somehow got stunned by my self who can't shoot for anything. So perhaps we should think about the hierarchy of this of our crew a little bit more. Yes, we should. <laughs> he is a fool and rash. Gather up our mirror selves. If I knew anything about this universe, they are, how do I put it? Mm kindly towards them we can use them as ransom to gain access to the other ship <laughs> love it good sir and uh as far as our comrades they they'll, they'll they'll come back to consciousness eventually excellent work there'll be a commendation in your record moving forward commander will cut her out <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> all right 
play the organ yourself out? <laughs> oh, Lord. So I think what we're going to do is... Evil O'Connor has a cape, by the way. <laughs> please, oh. tell me, please tell me you have a cat in your arms at all times. Oh, at all times. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so evil prawl, that will happen, but only after everyone has gotten off. I know that okay. sounds weird, but there's there's context to that. I swear it's not just phrasing. <laughs> so uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to cut to the CIC of the regular Matahari, uh, where a lot of people are not present, but who is here is uh, Captain O'Connor. Now, Captain, you've been uh, pretty much seated at the main CIC hollow table. And just sort of waiting on your away team to report in when you get a hail from the crash ship. Channel open. And this appearing on screen is your Sorry. evil self. Now there's two options here. Either yeah. you can talk to yourself and I'll give you two momentum. Or I oh, can yeah. play evil Captain O'Connor. Oh no, I'm playing my evil self. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. All right, let's see what we got. All right, hold on, give me a second. <clears throat> me, 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 me. All right, cool. All right. Hello, O'Connor. Is it? I... <sighs> Hello, Captain. So, as I'm sure you've already devised, I have your crew. <laughs> <sighs> what do you want? Your ship, simply put. You will replace yourselves with my crew, and you will stay aboard this crashed vessel. We shall escape, and you shall die here. <laughs> I mute it. Um, Captain O'Connor to delay up. Delay up here. I need you on the bridge. We have a problem. Uh, I kept them. Unmute it. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm losing you. Uh, evil look. And I cut the I cut the com. Cut the com. All right. <laughs> yeah. You called me evil. All right. Uh, and of course, right at a dramatically appropriate moment to lay up, you come onto the bridge. Uh, you summoned me, Captain. How are repairs going? Uh, they're going pretty well, actually, considering the state of the ship when I when I got there. So uh, the ventral uh, uh, patches are mostly in place. There are only a couple left to be placed. The ventral are mostly covered by Tolea. force fields. So lay up. Stop yes. talking. We have a very, very serious problem. Yes, I know. The warp core is not developing uh, warp plasma. The rest of the bridge, the rest of the senior staff has been captured by our mirror universe selves. I do not know if they are alive, but the evil version of myself or the mirror version, I say evil. He had a weird laugh. But with that being said, um, we're at a... I don't really know what to do here. Uh, transporters and, are back uh, online. Have they removed their comm badges? Oh, Connor like, sits down in his chair and says, wait, what? The transporters are back online? Yes. Can you get a lock on them? I, I'm not at the station. Give me a moment. All right, so Talia, if you run over to Ops and, yeah, you see that there's combat signals. <laughs> Um, All right, so for safety, because in Mirror Universe, should we beam them straight to Brig and see who they are? Um, yes, um, yes, beam them to the Brig. Uh, Captain O'Connor to Chief Medical Officer, I need a uh, medical team down in the Brig ASAP. Um, incoming, possibly wounded. Um, just stand by for further orders. Yes, sir, we'll, we'll be on our way. Uh, Captain O'Connor will get to a station as well, and we'll try mm -hmm. to assist to layup since I do have a decent engineering. Okay, so this um, is going oh wait, to be. Can the can the can the the Monahari can just assist him, right? Yeah, the the Monahari automatically assists. Okay, so I'll just let the Monahari assist. All right, so to layup, that's going to be mm -hmm. a control engineering. The Monahari will assist you with a sensors engineering, and the difficulty on this is going to be a two overall after accounting for talents who's on a pad who's not on a pad etc cetera, etc cetera. uh computers is a focus i'll give it to you excellent they run from the ship all right thank you Jero. jesus okay 
So actually that complication is good because it means I don't have to spend threat. Yeah, you complete the transport, but you get a call from the brig and uh, the brig security officer says, uh, sir, uh, the it was only the comm badges that materialized, sir. The, uh, the officers didn't come with. Well, that, that's not good. Uh, sh sir, should I do another center sweep? We, we should be able to lock on to a Rigelian, uh, a uh, pair of uh, Bajoran and a pair of uh, Cardassians fairly easily, yes? Correct. Also, one of our junior grade, the 10th junior grades, I believe his name is Bradish, is down there as well. That may be a bit harder to find. Well, it depends how many humans there are over there. I, a lot. I mean, potentially, I we could just beam everybody if they have no shields. Oh, look at that. I'm spending two threat. Their shields just went up. <laughs> Which, to be fair, that is my last of my threat, so I can't do anything more like that. But yeah, shields are up now on the evil ship. <sighs> well, Captain, uh, let me do a quick scan, and I'll tell you if I have any ideas. All right. So uh, what type of scan are you aiming for here, Brian? So I want to see if their shields encompass the runabout, because presumably the runabout's still attached to the outside. Mm -hmm. And that should be able to make a pad to pad trans transport, which means we could see we could beam secretly onto the we could beam a, a small team onto the runabout and then access the ship from there. Mm -hmm. um, and if I use the the warp core um, plasma development as a if I vent some of it and create a a, a, a distraction or some sort of uh, interference we may be able to beam over undetected if their sensors don't pick it up if they're not looking yeah. specifically for that I'd allow it I'd allow it Prawl is smiling because he knows what's going to happen but I'd allow it all right so this is going to be a control or for you it'd be a reason engineering the Matahari will assist you with a sensors engineering. Difficulty overall will be a two. Awesome. Um, I don't think I have. I mean, unless you're going to let computers stand as a... Nah, I can't give it to you this time. That's what I was... I, yeah, I don't think I have a focus this time. Oops. Okay, so two successes, which means, or three successes, so you get a momentum. Now, Prawl, or later? Leave it for later. Leave it for later. Yeah, you, uh, you scan the entire shield grid of the uh, enemy ship, and unfortunately, the shields do encompass the runabout. Hmm. Well... Sir, uh, they've they've managed to raise their shields enough that they cover even the runabout. Although I, I do have a suggestion about that. I'm open to options. If I can uh, establish a remote connection to the runabout, I might be able to have her uh, power up and just uh, scan the interior of the shields and get their shield frequency, which will let us beam through. Let's try it. All right, so I have a very important question from Evil Jensen. Would have Evil Jensen have thought to change the command codes? I would think so. He's He's been sitting there pondering a lot. So, yeah. All right, so to lay up, you try to establish communication with the runabout. Your command codes are invalid. Hmm. Sir, my command codes remain invalid. Question. As a commanding officer, like a captain, do I have like a a skeleton key override that I can use? I would say you would in normal circumstances, but I think it's fair to say that um because I'm trying to remember the one TNG episode in particular, you know the one where um what was his name? The guy who went after the Cardassian transport was a friend of O'Brien's. What was his name? Oh, um, Ah, I don't remember. But you remember the episode, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the one where, you know, the Enterprise tried to stop him raiding Cardassian uh, quote-unquote convoys by doing right. the command code thing. 
and it didn't work because they had changed it out. I think Jensen has done that. I think Evil Jensen has done that. That's okay. I, I have a question then. Yes. Okay. So presumably mm -hmm. you, you're going to need, if uh, in the sense of if there's ever an emergency and you come across a ship, there needs mm -hmm. to be a way that you can access the ship without needing necessarily to override all of its all of its systems. Yeah, so, there's a tertiary backup. Right. So here's what I'm thinking. There must be a way to just send a command to the ship that just says, hey, you're you're in an emergency. Um, restore a tertiary backup. Um, and then have it recycle and essentially do, do that thing where like what that Windows does, where it restores, restores to its last save point. A system restore wanna, point. Yeah. Factory default. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I like and, it. I'm gonna make it difficult, but it is possible. I'm, yeah, I just think I would bet that Jensen isn't savvy enough about engineering to know <laughs> to reset the tertiary backup. I think that's probably fair. That's fair. So let's have to lay up. This is going to be a presence and engineering. It will be difficulty five. The Matahari will assist you with a communications and engineering. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to spend a my determination using mm -hmm. the key to success can often be thinking on your feet to automatically get the critical success. Mm -hmm. Can I spend uh, two more a momentum and have mm -hmm. three dice to roll in this? Okay. And you, I think you forgot to take your momentum when you rolled three the last roll. You oh, to I, take a momentum. Sorry, I'm, so. I'm, I thought we'd agreed that uh, Commander Jaro was going to manage everyone's momentum. I was just confused as to why anybody was grabbing their own at all. Oh, okay, sorry. Then I will drag. Sorry, these I got off. spoiled because in the other game I play, the other player manages all the momentum. And I never have to do anything. <laughs> gotcha. No, no, no that's fine. No, you're good. Actually, I'll just draw three, and now we have it. We're good. All right, cool. Excellent. All right, so. Uh, 3d20, one of them, uh, and a fourth d20 is already a crit success, yes? Mm -hmm. And it, all right, for a total of five, uh, computers is a focus. I'll give it to you. Most definitely would apply here. <sighs> all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on, hold on. So that's three successes, which means if the Matahari crits, you manage to pull this off. Uh, right. Sorry. So the Matahari is rolling. Communications exactly? and engineering. So no pressure here. Extreme pressure. Yeah. Oh nice. my gosh! <laughs> nice. That's so good. Nice. So, oh, uh, not to put a damper in this, yes. I thought our communication system was down. It was, but it's been restored by now. Okay. Yeah, by now it would have been easy enough to restore it, I think. But, uh, you know, I appreciate the evil thought. <laughs> so, God. Uh, my brain is dying right now. So what happens to Layup is you do, quote unquote, factory reset the runabout. And what I would say is that you now have the ability to work sort of remote so it's basically like a remote desktop you can literally do anything on the runabout that you could do physically all right so i want to do an internal scan and find out what's going on on the runabout itself all right so you know that the runabout is filled with anesthesine gas and that somebody has set explosives on the warp core oh well let's immediately beam those explosives off the warp core okay how uh, are you with... doing that because it is still within the shield grid well, no, because I'm using the uh, shield, uh, transporter pad on the runabout to beam them out, so I'm not going through the shield. Oh, gonna you're going to beam it to the evil Matahari. To the evil Matahari, which is also inside its shield grid. Okay. Uh, and you know what? I, I'm I'm just evil enough that I'm putting it on their warp core um, in a place that I know is specifically really difficult to get to. Mm -hmm. Like, it's at one of the ends, and you have to go underneath the cap. And it's only accessible by one Jeffrey's too, which is the one of the narrow ones because it's right on the dorsal hull. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. All right. Well, that all happens. My next question is, uh, you would be able to find your missing crew because there's, it, accounting for everyone that has survived the crash of the evil Matahari, 
there's maybe about 30 people, including, you know, the evil captain, the evil Jaro, et cetera, et cetera. So it's easy enough to find your crew. So my question is, do you just beam them into the runabout and then have the runabout fly back? Or is there well, more involved here? Well, I'm going to vent the anesthesine gas, obviously. Okay. Um, can I mesh with the, can I interact, can I network to the Matahari's computer, since I, the evil Matahari, since I'm connected to it? If you give me the two momentum, yes. Cool, because I'm going to flood it with anesthesine gas. Okay, yeah, I'll let it happen. <laughs> and then I'll beam our crew onto the runabout and then seal it so that they can wake up and take the runabout back. Okay. So I think what happens here is, and I know we're we're going to end a little early, but we're going to talk afterwards, so don't worry about it. Um, so I think what happens is a series of events here where the runabout is going to depart out of the shield, and it's going to return to the regular Matahari, right as the regular Matahari is, thanks to Tuleip's engineering teams, lifting up off of the surface, and the runabout docks. And right as the Matahari sort of angles away, uh, we see the bad Matahari. An explosion happens, a literal warp core detonation, and all of your problems just handle themselves. Oh, but how yeah. unfortunate. The, the Matahari, the uh, Mirror Universe Matahari has just exploded, Captain. I don't know what happened. <laughs> that is truly a mystery to lay up one that shall remain a mystery for all time. Well done, sir. And I will put a commendation in his record. All right. So yeah, uh, I wanted to end a little bit early. Uh, I know we only went for a little bit there, but I did want to end early because I did want to get a, sort of a vibe check, if that's all right. Um, so we've been going with the Matahari for seven sessions. And normally we'd be a little bit more than that, but you know, due to scheduling, it's been a little bit rough. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to get a gauge. Is everybody feeling like they're contributing? Is everybody having fun? Um, or is this one of those things where um, I should maybe be trying to spin up a different style of campaign? You know, what what are people's thoughts on the matter? Like, is everybody, you know, having fun with the Matahari campaign as is? I mean, I, I, I have been. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean God. okay. Cause um, I will say this. Yes. And if I'm being completely at it, the, the, this session was, I was having personally as a player, just a slight problem with mm -hmm. like fighting myself. You know what right. I mean? That this was a very interesting, unique session though. But I feel like as a crew, we've finally started to mesh well. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see, more interactions i like that it's like me the captain and then there's four you know bridge crew mm -hmm. so that as we talked about the one session i can have teams doing things mm -hmm. and i would like some more um i would like some more like moments where different like the different crew members can shine mm -hmm. um and that's what i i would be looking for if that makes sense okay no though it's a that's perfectly valid feedback uh anyone else Um, I just, uh, I'm starting to, we're starting to get dynamics where different crew members have different personalities towards each other, mm -hmm. either positive or negative, depending on how they feel about each other. And it's been kind of fun to see those develop. And I'd like to see those explored a little bit more too, because I, I know, uh, Jensen and Talea have kind of a, an oil and water kind of relationship. Yeah. Unbeknownst to Talea. <laughs> he thought we were we, I thought we were bros we were science bros man and then I, <laughs> it was like in the in like the I forgot what session it was but I, I threw out some ideas and you're just like no that won't work that won't work I'm like dude <laughs> yeah it was it's called constructive criticism <laughs> well that idea's bad then. I feel like we have to have that conversation in character now cool uh, I, 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 this is it's, it's kind of like Jinx has been very passive aggressive towards the lamp and I kind of had fun with it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately you weren't here last session. So, so it could really come to a head because mm. <laughs> we would have been in that same room and I'd be like literally following you around with my data pad, checking everything after you got done with it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just, just, that's what, what my plan was, but you weren't there. <laughs> nice. And I was like, you can oh. still have that. <laughs> oh yeah. We, I, I think we can explore this because I think it's a fun one because eventually it can come to that. Bro stance at some point, <laughs> but 
you know, I, I, just, I like that kind of friendly conflict as it were. And mm -hmm. I think those are, those are fun. And I think you have that with Prawl and some of the, the other officers too. I think we can have those kind of, because obviously prawl has got stuff that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. Could be a lot of fun to explore too. So. I hear that Jaro might have some stuff we don't know about too. I was going to yeah. say, oh my gosh, Jaro <laughs> opened up a whole can of worms. I'm like, well, now. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we can just like be clear in the in the chats between sessions if we want to have a scene in advance, just so mm -hmm. ELH knows. Because mm -hmm. like yeah. now, like you know, definitely like you said, like well, like like Mira Jaro did some some stuff, and so it's sort of like. You know, I want to make sure that there's just a payoff of to that somewhere down the line, and it yeah. didn't be in this session, which is which is perfectly fine because the direction it went, I think, was amazing. Mm -hmm. I think the direction this ended up going was amazing, but there yeah. was like a payoff for that. So I just want to make sure that that just like, the, you know, the circuit is tied on that mm -hmm. one. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. here's what I'm thinking then. So. Uh, you don't have to go and watch it, but what we did on October recently is we did literally a bottle episode and it was literally the entire thing was lower decks. Like everything was just the players doing the scenes they wanted and there was no overarching plot. Um, so if you want, we can make our next session that, um, and that would give you guys a lot of time to do those in character interactions to do that sort of uh, thing I think we're driving towards in this conversation. Um, the one thing I would ask, though, is that you maybe come up with a few scenes to start us off with. Because I can always throw you guys together. Like, it's as a GM, I can do that just at a whim. But I think it's more natural if it's a scene you guys want to do first. And then we can sort of just improv our way from there, if that makes any sense. Thanks. Yeah, that would be actually perfect because the Manahari can be in dry dock while we're getting repaired. Like mm -hmm. that would be a really good like out yeah. like like mo like meta, you know, macro universal things happening mm -hmm. like macro story, and like we're all like just waiting for the ship to be fixed, etc. Like that could be cool. Um, I did want to take a moment to just prop out Tolea for tonight. Um, just to like toot his horn. You were so evil. Like I I was physically getting nervous that our like good characters were not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. And I was yeah, like definitely. I was like physically getting upset. I was like, no, <laughs> stop the evil. Like it was it was so well done that like I realized I got lost in it for a yeah. second and was like getting mad. And I was like, I, wait. Just I genuinely like... reined it in a little when you went, Why are you trying to kill us? And I was like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess this is kind of a side character. I wish it maybe like no, it, it was back good. A little. It was not. I was like, no. it's good, man. Like it was really good, but like it, it was so intense tonight that I was like, oh my god, like this is this, we're yeah, gonna that's, die. that's what inspired me to go all for it. I was like, you know what? I should play to my strengths, you know. <laughs> but I really appreciated the like. That's something that I think sometimes in Star Trek you we almost miss. It's like the good guys always get out. You know what I mean? Like they always mm -hmm. succeed. It's, right, it's right. almost a trope, right? So to have that fear of no space is fucking scary mm -hmm. was really refreshing, and um, I enjoyed it. So I, I just again props to ELH and also everyone oh, else for you. just playing playing well. It was good. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I did want to say that uh, you guys have been an amazing group so far, and I hope that continues. So uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to kill the stream. Uh, so Twitch and YouTube, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we will see these lovely individuals in two weeks' time. Until then, live long and prosper stream. <laughs>